From time to time, your sanitary valves require routine maintenance to ensure proper operating efficiency. This video will teach you the standard service procedures of the SPX Flow APV Delta SD4 double seal valve. Servicing the SD4 valve will require the tools displayed here. It is important to note the use of APV food grade grease in the maintenance procedure to ensure proper operation of the valve and its internal components. Use of other brands or types of grease may cause damage to internal components resulting in a malfunctioning valve. Please refer to the operation manual for additional details on where and how to apply grease throughout the maintenance process. Caution must be used at all times when supplying air to the valve throughout the maintenance process. Never reach into or place fingers in the way of potentially moving components to avoid risk of injury. In a side-by-side -side comparison of the SWCIP4 and the SD4, you will notice a few subtle changes. Pictured on the left, the SWCIP4 double seal valve has a clamped housing connection and only one leakage chamber valve. The SD4 double seal valve, pictured on the right, has a flanged housing connection and two leakage chamber valves, one for supply and one for discharge. The leakage chamber is an atmospheric break between the seat seals which allows a path for leakage in the event of a seal failure, maintaining safe mix-proof conditions. Another change that may be noticed is that the SD4 is fitted with a knot element for positive air assist to hold the valve in a closed position when fluid separation is desired. This is seen with an additional air tube routed from the control top air out to position to the actuator can. Before disassembling the valve, please confirm the process line is empty and pressure has been released from the system. Remove the lid of the control top unit to gain access to the solenoid valve. A normally closed valve must be actuated to bring the shaft to an open position which compresses the internal spring before opening the valve and removing the valve insert. Activate the solenoid valve by turning the manual override. Using a 13 mm box wrench, loosen and remove the four bolts connecting the valve to the valve body. Deactivate the solenoid to lift the valve from the body. Remove the air hose connecting the solenoid valve and knot element with the actuator. Loosen the screws in the clamp ring which holds the control unit to the control unit adapter and move the clamp ring down over the actuator. Place the control unit near the valve body noting that it still remains IP67 NEMA compliant with the lid and cover in place. Remove the air hose connecting the leakage and CIP discharge valves and carefully lift the valve insert from the body. Remove the magnet adapter using a 17 mm wrench. Next, loosen and remove the coupling nut which holds the actuator and the valve shaft together. This requires a 17 mm and a 19 mm wrench. Hold the centering ring in place while loosening and removing the upper nut. Finally, remove the centering ring located underneath the coupling nut. The valve shaft can now be removed from the entire unit. The next step will demonstrate the replacement of the product wetted parts. Using a pick, remove the body seal, shaft seal, as well as the split guide bushing. Apply a thin layer of grease on the new body seal and install assuring an even installation in the provided groove without any twists or high spots. Install the new split bushing by compressing it at the split until the bushing falls into the machined groove. Install the new shaft seal assuring it is installed in the correct orientation.
This section will demonstrate the seat seal replacement procedure. To protect the valve shaft from damage, aluminum or copper brackets should be placed over the jaws of the vise. Once the brackets are in place, secure the valve shaft in a vise as shown. Carefully remove the two seat seals using a pick. After removing the seals, remove the valve shaft from the vise. Inspect the shaft for any damage. A damaged shaft should be replaced immediately. To install the new seat seal correctly, the seat seal assembly tool must be used to ensure a proper fit. A correct fit will avoid causing adverse valve performance or potential product contamination issues when placed back into service. Disassemble the seat seal assembly tool. Place the valve shaft in the holder. Place the locking screw over the shaft and tighten so that the shaft cannot rattle. Secure the entire unit in the vise. Apply a thin layer of APV food grade grease to the seals. A packet of the recommended grease is supplied with the seal kit. Place the new seat seal over the metal ring with the seal inscription side facing up. Next, insert the metal ring with the new seat seal inside the assembly tool as well as the PTFE ring. Tighten the C-nut while the seat seal assembly tool is locked in the vise. Finally, use a C-spanner or strap wrench to tighten the screw firmly. Loosen the C-nut, remove the PTFE ring, release the vise and remove the seat seal assembly tool. Undo the locking screw and remove the valve shaft. Inspect the seat seal for an even fit. Secure the valve shaft in the vise once again, ensuring the jaws are covered with aluminum or copper to protect the valve shaft from damage. The next step will demonstrate assembly of the lower seat seal. Apply a thin layer of grease to the seat seal. Make sure the radial seat seal is installed in the correct orientation. Place the seal over the groove as shown and ensure it does not twist. Use a flat screwdriver with smooth round corners for assembly of the new radial seat seal. With the tool, press the seat seal down into the groove with your thumb. Press the seat seal in small alternating increments as shown and check for an even fit. The next sequence will show you how to change the seals of the leakage and CIP discharge valves. For illustration purposes, we are only showing the maintenance procedures for one of the two valves on the SD4, since they are identical. Remove the screws and the bracket holding the leakage discharge valve in place. Next, remove the leakage discharge valve and unscrew the top cover. Extract the piston from the housing and remove the O-rings with a pick. Next, remove the gasket and O-rings and discard. Apply a thin layer of grease on the new O-rings and gasket and install. Assemble the leakage discharge valve to the valve body and tighten the screws firmly. The next step will demonstrate reassembly of the valve. Place the plastic tube, which also comes standard with the APV replacement seal kit, over the thread at the top of the guide rod to prevent potential damage to the shaft seal inside the yoke when inserting it through the yoke. Push the valve shaft through the shaft seal. Position the valve upright and install the centering ring. 
Next, install the self-locking coupling nut and tighten using a 19mm wrench. Use a 17mm wrench on the centering ring to block it in place. The required torque is 40 Nm, Newton meters. Screw the magnet back onto the guide rod and tighten it with minimum torque. Place the clamp ring over the actuator and install the control unit onto the adapter. Next, position the clamp ring and tighten the screws. Install the air hose between the knot element in the control unit and the actuator. Place the valve insert back into the valve housing. Reconnect the air hose to the leakage and CIP discharge valves. Remove the control unit cover and install the air connection to the solenoid valve. Activate the solenoid valve by means of the manual override in order to lift the valve shaft and compress the spring. Insert and tighten the flange screws by hand, and then tighten with a 13mm wrench in a cross-order pattern to ensure proper seating. Deactivate the solenoid valve to allow the shaft to move into a closed position. Install the control top cover and tighten until the window and the LED stripe are aligned. Following these procedures will help you properly maintain your SPX APV SD4 valves to maximize operating life and maintain process integrity. To order replacement seal kits or tools, contact your authorized SPX Flow sales representative or visit www.spxflow.com/apv for more information.